What does home mean to you? And I want to encourage you to speak your one word answer out loud so I can hear it up here. Love, peace. And those at home, type it into the chat. What else? Safety, beautiful. Now hold on to that. Your home, my home, our home is not a geographical location at all. In a way, Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz discovered this truth for herself in a most interesting walk down a yellow brick road. My talk today has just a little bit to do with and something in common with that 1939 movie classic, The Wizard of Oz, and the 1975 adaptation, The Wiz, with an all-black cast. And it is this, Dorothy discovered for herself where home really is. Home is this way. Home means different things to different people. Notice your answers. None of them were tangible, were they? Home is where you're cared for more than any place else. You said, I heard you say love, I heard peace, I heard safety. Regardless of what's going on in the outside world, when you're home, you feel that sense of love and safety and family. Home is the safe zone where all is well. Conversely, though, there are some who have a totally different perspective about what home means. And it's not always a happy place, and that's okay. This is why. We are always at choice, and we get to choose how we want to be. We can move beyond the mind into the sanctity of our heart space. We must hold ourselves accountable for where we place our attention. And some people just truly don't know how to express love. We need to get to the truth of who we are to know thyself. And to know thyself means that we must find that place of conscious awareness inside ourselves. Progressive ed educators are beginning to realize, as the ancient Greeks did, that true education is the process of waking up to and releasing the effusion of light, Eric Butterworth. Our true home is in the silence. This is where we recognize our oneness with the one, God, spirit, by any name you want to call it. It's a beautiful, peaceful place where we experience the true essence of ourselves and also to wait, to wait on what you might ask, to wait on that still, small voice. We will experience going home together down the road further on in the talk this morning. Does this sound familiar? There is no place like home. Let's watch. Place like home. Did you notice how Glinda was waving that little wand over Dorothy's head? and she immediately closed her eyes. Disconnect her brain from that thinking, thinking, thinking to go deep within. Dr. Hasselbeck, Paul Hasselbeck, Dean of Spiritual Education and Enrichment for Unity Worldwide Spiritual Institute, one of my teachers, by the way, says this, if we were only our mind, we could not rise to a dimension above it in order to observe and to study it. I believe it's imperative that each of us go above our mind to go within, to truly be home. 
quote, I have found that the kingdom of God is within man and that we are wasting our time and defeating the work of the spirit if we look for it anywhere else. Charles Fillmore. So how do we get there? How do we get to the self that knows itself to be whole, love, and not separate from God? How do we get home? We get there through the silence of meditation. You might say, I've heard about meditate. I meditate, we meditate here every Sunday, right? This is where we have this sense of our oneness with spirit, and that oneness is home. So what is meditation? Simply put, meditation is man's spiritual approach to God, revealing word. It's really a short journey to get home. We're going to have some fun with this today. We're going to travel. Uh, we're going to begin the journey right now. We're going to cross. We won't have to worry about, you know, clicking our heels and walking down the yellow brick road. But we are going to cross some streets. We're going to cross some streets, some boulevards, some avenues, and some paths. Are y'all ready for that? Okay, so I had some fun with this, and I named the streets according to some particular powers or abilities. There are six streets, avenues, boulevards, what have you, uh, five of which were chosen to coincide with the 12 principles, and Reverend Linda shared with us some of those 12 principles last month during the series, right? Y'all remember that? Recognizing these abilities help to foster a remembrance of our innate abilities to do and to be whatever we choose as we head on down the road. Now we'll begin this short journey. And the first street is Love Street. Love is the ability to know and feel your oneness with all creation. Additionally, it is the pure essence of being that binds together the whole human family. Of all of the attributes of God, love is undoubtedly the most beautiful. In divine Mind, love is the power that joins and binds in divine harmony the universe and everything in it. It is the great harmonizing principle known to man. Next is understanding boulevard. Understanding is the ability to comprehend and to spiritually see. Now we have Faith Street. The perceiving power of the mind linked with the power of shape substance. It is a deep and inner knowing that that which is sought is already ours. Revealing word. Continuing on down, we now come to Make a Change Avenue. To make a change is a matter of the mind. In the book, Discover the Power Within, Eric Butterworth says, Jesus was the Christopher Columbus of the soul. He crossed the frontier of the mind and discovered a whole new world within himself. Richard Rohr says in The Universal Christ, Jesus quite clearly believed in change. In fact, the first public word out of his mouth was the Greek imperative verb, and to those who speak Greek, I apologize right now. It is mantanoite, which literally means make a change or change your mind. Go beyond your mind. Matthew 3, 2, 4, 17, and Mark 1, 15. We can change our mind if we choose and if we are willing to do so. For example, 20 minutes a day two times a day. I'm still working on the second time of day, but that's okay. 
Let's cross Wisdom Street. Wisdom is intuitive knowing, spiritual intuition, the voice of God within the source of our understanding, mental action based on the Christ truth within. We're still traveling. Now we are at meditation path. This is actually quite a busy lane with so many people making an effort to sit in silence. Some struggling to sit, some struggling to stay focused, some reading books on every subject, while more are simply sitting, being, and present. Those sitting in silence are fully immersed in the sacred space and are fully aware. There's no ego self in this space. Peace is here. Peace. Peace. On my refrigerator at home, I have this magnet and it says, peace does not mean to be in a place where there is no noise, trouble, or hard work. It means to be in the midst of all of those things and still be calm in your heart, author unknown. The question comes up, did Jesus meditate? There's proof that not only was Jesus around folk who did meditate, that he himself must have Listen to this. After all, the Torah, the Old Testament, explains the belief that Jesus traveled around with people who meditate, or he spent some time with meditators. Some scholars say that he, met, he, was with, he traveled to places such as India and the Far East, and we know that there are meditators in that part of the world, yes? Some even believe that he studied the teachings of Buddha. Remember, Jesus spent 40 days and 40 nights praying in the desert. This was an evolved being. Do you believe, now we believe that, that, that prayer is talking to God and meditation is listening, right? Do you believe such an evolved being just sat in prayer all those 40 days and 40 nights and never sat in silence to listen? The EOC Institute writes this. Was Jesus' prayer technique actually more of a meditation technique? In Matthew 6, 5, Jesus taught his disciples to pray alone, and to use few words, which sounds less like a prayer in a pure sense and more like a meditation technique, end quote. There are 31 mentions of meditation in the Bible. 31. When you consider that, it becomes relatively clear that Jesus was quite familiar with meditation. When we are in the space of silence, then and only then can we hear, sense, feel the oneness of our true selves and where we truly reside. There is no doubt that in this place we feel love, safety, family, and we are at home. I read a story about this little girl who lived in the countryside, and she used to love playing with the butterflies and playing with the little birds, and she used to go into this little chapel. And the little girl used to go in the chapel, and she would just simply pray. And after she finished praying, she would sit in total silence. When asked, 
what are, what are you doing? She said, waiting. Waiting? Waiting on waiting to see if God has something to say to me. Aren't children brilliant? There are, they are closest to the kingdom. This little girl really knew how to find home on her own. I remain engaged with the world as it is, yet attuned to a more enduring spiritual reality. That was in the Daily Word, May the 10th. I believe that we can go home once or twice a day for 20 minutes, twice a day. I'm still working on that second half. And I believe in you. I believe in you. But what's more important is that you believe in yourself. Let's watch. Her heart, right? She puts her whole body into that song, and I felt it down to my soul. I felt it. Okay, so now to end, some of the greatest teachers on the planet taught how to go in the silence. I believe going in the silence through meditation to be home base, right here inside. It's not a physical location. Rather, it is the underlying God substance. This, of course, is stated in various ways by many teachers. However, the essence of the message is that the most loving and peaceful place is always available to us. This is home. It is the innermost part of who we are. Now, to accept some idea of truth, never having experienced it, or having, not having experienced it in a long time, or not having experienced it with new eyes and new ears and new beingness, is really like being in Texas in July on a hot summer's day and only having a pitcher of a tall glass of cold water. You really need to experience it, right? So now, I would invite you to go into this moment of meditation as though it is the first time you've ever meditated. Stay with me. Go into this moment like you've never meditated on a Sunday morning after, this, after the message before. Let this be a new experience for you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to ask you to leave your ego, your identity, male, female, your profession, cashier, doctor, lawyer, leave everything that identifies you as a person to the side. Just sit to the side. You can pick it up in a moment, I promise. But for now, set that, all of that to the side. And let's get comfortable in the way that you know how. You may start by releasing the tension in your body. Now, sometimes we don't even know how tense we are, so I'm gonna ask you to tense all your muscles, squeeze your fists, squint your eyes, tense, 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 and release with an exhale. Let's do that again. Tense up and release, big breath out. Because we have no labels, we are simply spirit. And we're going to go into the silence. 
with some really soft music, really soft bop. And at some point at the end of this bop, we're going to go into silence for two minutes. But for now, just some soft music. Thank you. We need to give our minds something to attach itself to because we're going to be in this moment, this brand new moment. We're going we're gonna to be in this moment fully present. We're going to give our minds something to attach to. It can be a word, a phrase. Use something like on the inhale, I am. On the exhale, home. On the inhale, I am. And on the exhale, home. Let's do that one more time. I am home. And now you can choose those, or you can choose any phrase you choose. You like five words or less. Then when your mind decides to stray to what's for dinner, bring it back to that phrase, I am on the inhale, and home on the exhale. You're simply here with nothing to do do, nowhere to go, and you are at peace in this space. Oh, how beautiful this is. It's so beautiful here. Just for two minutes, we're going to be totally silent now. Thank you. Just, just for a couple of minutes. Very gently start to move your fingers, toes, just come back into your body with a big inhale and exhale. Fully present in this now moment. And when you are ready, open your eyes.
Thank you, Gigi. It was a nice, uh, nice experience. Thanks for reminding us to come home is where we are and where God is. And with all the craziness out there, that refuge, that love, that peace, right here. What a reminder. It's very powerful. Thank you very much for that. And uh, Bob, last week you played something. You played a song that is an old standard hymn. It's like coming back home to me. So I, I enjoyed that song so much. I wanted to sing that this week. And Bob was kind enough to play that for us as well. And Gigi, you know, this song is called It Is Well. Home is a place where it is well. And we have a little part in that where people kind of echo that. So I hold out a song, I hold out the note, it is well, and everybody sings, it is well. And so uh, that's what Gigi's going to do. She's got a new role here today. You didn't know that, but she's going to lead you into the echoing of this, this little bit that we're singing. So I'd like to share that with you now. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my love thou hast taught, me to say it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul, it is well. Of this glorious thought, my sin not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise. shall be sight the clouds be rolled back like the scroll the trump shall resound and the Lord shall resent even so it is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul.
Now it's time for offertory call. Is that what we're doing next? <laughs> I'm looking at someone else's. Okay. It is with energy of gratitude that we celebrate all of our abundance flowing through Center of Unity, and we're so grateful for those who faithfully share of their, finan their financial good in support of our ongoing mission. We are grateful for those who generously give of their time and talent. We are grateful that we live in an abundant universe and there is always enough, always enough to do what is ours to do. As we prepare to share our tithes and offerings with Center of Unity, see if you can bring to your heart gratitude for all of the good flowing through your life and all the good flowing through Center of Unity. As we bless our gifts, the ushers will invite you row by row to come to the front, come forward and place your gift in the gift baskets there. And by the way, I was instructed to inform you that there's two baskets, well, four actually, so you'll come down this aisle and come down this aisle simultaneously. You don't have to wait, so make sure that you file in. Um, and even if you give electronically, or, or this is not your Sunday to, to share, that's okay, please come forward anyway, and then just add your energy to the basket by placing your hand over it so you can use the one of those committed giving cards also you can place in the basket. If you're physically unable to come up front, there's a basket in the back by the door that you can drop your contrib contribution into. To support those who are watching remotely, to be in the flow of giving and receiving, you can go to center, centerofunity.org forward slash give and scroll down to select the perfect affirmation to support you through this coming week. Each week it changes, so there's a new and fresh one. Just click on a picture. Okay.
afternoon, good morning. If you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook for the first time, we're glad you've chosen to join us, and we invite you to visit our website and fill out the Connect card you'll find there. If you're visiting us in person today for the first time, and I see some people out there I think are, um, we ask you to fill out the card in front of you in the pew and drop it in the basket as you leave or leave it at the visitor desk. We truly welcome all of you. And for appreciation today, our longtime member and friend, Tom Jones, is with us, with us for the last time today before he leaves for Florida. Tom has worked in youth ed for years and held other volunteer positions as well. I know he and Margie were here for every single spring and fall cleanup that we have. He has supported our church through all of its changes and we wish him well as he moves on to his next chapter. Thank you, Tom. A little bit of appreciation. Tom, you're a good man. We, sir, we will miss you. Love you. Thank you for all you've done, Tom. We also appreciate Gigi Johnson, who stood in for Reverend Taylor today, and she always steps up to the plate to assist when needed. But most importantly, Gigi has worked hard over the last several years and will officially become a licensed Unity teacher by summer's end. And so to Tom and Gigi, we love you, we bless you, we truly appreciate you, and we hope behold the Christ in you. Namaste. And before we get into our announcements, Mary has a word she'd like to say. Well, I, this is not an easy thing to let you know. But I learned this morning that our beloved friend, uh, Bill Toon, made his transition Friday. And um, it's a shock. Uh, he was a courageous fighter um, with the disease that uh, he um, presented. And he had an attitude of gratitude um, every minute that I ever saw him. Um, he was a devoted servant to this church and to our entire congregation. And he will be missed. So if you would just take a moment um, with me, join with me. And those of you who don't know Bill, I'm sorry. And those of you who do, just call a picture of him to mind and join with me in blessing him on his journey. We know that he is filled with joy, with calm, with clarity. We know that wherever he is going, he is going to keep him in line and he's going to be there right with them, working and creating. And for those of you who believe this, he might just be with his beloved Karen at this moment. Thank you. Am I? I can get with it. Uh, I don't know any other announcements that we're supposed to have. They're supposed to be playing on the screen. Okay. Well, we can give them a couple of seconds here. There we go. Here's what's coming up at Center of Unity. Join Rhonda Lightfoot on the second Monday of the month at 7 p.m. for a guided meditation and discussion group. Whether you're new to meditation or have been practicing for a while, you will enjoy this class. There will be an opportunity to journal, so bring something to write in and meet in the sanctuary. Feel free to bring a blanket and or a cushion. 
As part of our spiritual cinema series, we're hosting a movie and pizza night featuring the film Field of Dreams on Wednesday, June 23rd at 6 p.m. It's fun for all ages, so visit our website or the Center of Unity app to RSVP. Every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m., Michelle Ricardo and others gather on Zoom to practice compassionate communication in a playful online environment. All are welcome to join. The Zoom ID is on the screen, or you can access it from our website or the Center of Unity app. Want to discuss the Sunday message in more detail? Join us online for an adult Sunday school from 12 to 12.45 p.m. Each class is self-contained and all are welcome to join. The Zoom ID is on the screen or you can access it from our website or the Center of Unity app. Join Rev. Linda every Tuesday at 11.30 a.m. for the Metaphysical Bible Interpretation class where we refocus our attention on the good that God is making available to us now. Each class is self-contained. The Zoom ID is on the screen, or you can access it from our website or the Center of Unity app. Every Sunday, we gather on Zoom before church to say, hey, and catch up. Come join us from 10 to 10.25 a.m. The Zoom ID is on the screen, or you can access it from our website or the Center of Unity app. There are multiple ways you can make a donation to the Center of Unity. You can drop off your donation at the church, mail it to our P.O. box, visit our website, use the COU or Venmo app, or you can text to give. Your continued support is greatly appreciated. All right, folks, now let's stand up and sing our peace song together, please. <laughs> on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God as a father, and we all are we. Let me walk with my family. Perfect Let us all join in to say our prayer for protection. Together, the light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Have a wonderful